Welcome to another video. We have one of those MIT integrals here, and this one requires a number of steps to get to the answer. Before we go on, remember to like this video, share this video, leave a comment in the comment section, and be subscribed if you're not. Let's get into the video. One very important thing we all have to have at the back of our minds is that I will not be doing a certain integral because um, you're free to watch the video. I'm going to put a link in the description, but you want to know that the integral, actually as a math student, you want to keep this in your head. You don't have to do the integral every time. The integral of e to the negative x squared, if you go from negative infinity to infinity, is supposed to be the square root of pi. But if you go from 0, that's half the way, then it's going to be this. And basically that's all you have to remember. So we're going to use this because the boundary we have today is from 0 to infinity. And that's all I want to say. There's going to be a point where I need to evaluate this, but I'm not going to show you how to do it. Um, you're free to watch the video I'm going to leave in the description. And we're going to use the square root of pi over 2. But how do we go from here to here? That's the question. The first thing you want to look at is, it's very tempting for you to try to do a u substitution, which is what you should do. However, what is going to be our u? See, because this is x to the fifth, you're more likely to say, or oh, maybe I should say u equals x to the fifth. But there's nothing here that is multiplied by dx that's going to take whatever the derivative of u is. So you want to go to the more complicated part and say, I am going to, how do I rewrite this? Remember, the ultimate mission is to have something that looks like this. So that might be a hint that maybe I should make my u to be x squared. Okay, how does that help me? The derivative of x squared is not x to the fifth. Well, you can also write x to the fifth as x squared times x squared times x. So that you're going to have the same u, u times u, and then there's going to be an x left, which is going to take the derivative of the u. So that's how you navigate at the beginning. So this is what we do. We're going to say, let, let's write it here. Let u be equal to x squared. So that du is 2x squared. I mean, it's 2x rather dx, and you can move this to here by writing this as one half, and you can, so you've divided both sides by two. So we're going to replace x dx with this. But you see this expression, we can write it as from zero to infinity of, this will be written as x squared squared times x, but I'm going to write that x here. I'm going to write x dx here, and then I'm going to write this as e to the negative x squared squared. So you can see where my u is hiding here. Let me move this away. Okay, I have it moved here, and this is what you have. Now I know that x dx is this, so I'm going to do my quick... Oh, by the way, once you have done a u substitution, you will have to evaluate at the limit. So what is the value of u when x is equal to 0? Well, it's going to be 0 squared, and that's 0. What about u when x is infinity? Okay, it's going to be infinity squared, which is also infinity. So the boundaries do not change. We can always say this is the integral from 0 to infinity of, this is our u squared, and this is e to the negative u squared. And x dx will now be replaced with 1 half du, 1 over 2 du. Let's put this in a box. So, it looks like at the beginning, the first transformation is 1 half of the integral from 0 to infinity of u squared e to the negative u squared 
do you okay so now it's going to look as if we're starting afresh so it's as if you have a derivative that looks like this let's see what else we're going to do for now it is important for you to know how to integrate this whenever you see it just as i told you how what the value of that integral was from the beginning now you want to know how to integrate this every time it is always integration by parts and what you do here is that you are going to split this u squared into two so you're going to have this to be the integral from okay no boundaries yet we're going to write u times u e to the negative u squared du now you're going to choose which one can i differentiate and which one can i integrate well definitely this one works for both you can easily differentiate this you can easily integrate this right but there's a nice resolution that comes with you choosing to integrate this because this can be easily integrated because the derivative of this is this u so you can get your u du and then it's done you can integrate it so our best strategy is to make this our u well it's already u we're going to differentiate this and we're going to integrate this and in this case i like to do the di method it just makes my life easy so for the di method i'm differentiating this i'm integrating this so i'm differentiating u and i'm integrating this so i have u e to the negative u squared is what i am integrating okay if i differentiate u i get one usually when i get one i just stop some people keep going to zero it's okay to go to zero the well that actually works you can go to zero but it wouldn't count okay let's let's differentiate u you get one differentiate one you get zero now let's integrate this how do i integrate this it's another strategy that you're going to adopt again okay now here it's going to be a u substitution so watch this we're trying to integrate u e to the negative u squared du we're going to say let t be equal to negative u squared Okay, t is negative u squared, which tells me that dt will be equal to negative 2u du. At least I have my u du, which is what I was looking for in this integration. I can move this, let's write it this way, integral of e to the negative u squared times u du. So, I have my u du, I can say that negative 1 half dt is equal to u du so i'm going to replace u du with negative one half dt so let's move on this is equal to the integral of e to the negative u squared is t and u du is just one half dt so i'm going to put that one half here one half negative and then what do i have here i have dt but we know the integral of any exponential function, this one, your answer is just negative one half e to the t. So the, this inti whole integration ends up giving us negative one half e to the t. That's what I'm going to write here. It's going to be negative one half e to the t. But what did we say t was? Negative u squared. That's our integral. Okay? And I think this is where I'm going to stop because now to integrate this, oh, can I integrate this? Well, even if I integrate it, I multiply by zero, it doesn't work. So I'm just going to stop here. Okay, that's why I didn't want to go to zero because that's going to be a long trip. Do we know the integral of this again? Well, we'll need the boundaries. So I don't want to use the error function. Okay, that's what I was saying. The integral of this will require the use of the error function, which I have not talked about on this channel. So that's why I don't want to do it. Let's just stop here. Okay, let's clean up. So the results from the DI table can be transferred here. This integral, which is what we just did here, will be this product. This is a plus and this is a minus. It's u times this. So your answer is going to be u times this if we multiply oh let's write the numbers first so this is going to be negative one half of u e to the negative u squared okay um minus it's supposed to be my okay if we multiply this way we're going to have minus times minus that's plus and then you have the integral of this product 
which is one half of e to the negative u squared. Okay, at this point, since we've completed the integration, we can bring back the boundaries. As writing this, integrated between these two, but because this is an improper integral, I cannot say the boundary is from zero to this point. I'll have to take the limit. So I'm going to say it is equal to the limit as r goes to infinity, I like using r, of negative one over two u e to the negative u squared evaluated from zero to r. So instead of putting infinity here, we just put r there. And then we say um, plus the integral from zero to infinity of one half of e to the negative u squared du. Okay, I don't need to do any calculation here because it was the number I told you from the beginning. This value here is pi over two. Okay, um, hey, it is half of it. Sorry, I have to multiply by one half. Everything is multiplied by one half. So it's one over two times all of this. Okay, now, this is gonna be zero. This is gonna be pi over two, multiplied by one half. Okay, um, what do we do? I can move this one half back here. Let's move this one half back here. This is equal to one over two times this integral. So what I have here is plus one over two times square root of pi over two. That's what I have here. I'm gonna be multiplying my answer by one half, and this is gonna be zero. Now I just need to show you how this is gonna be zero, and this is clearly zero, okay? So if you look at this, it looks like it's gonna be, ooh, final answer. It's gonna be one half times pi over four, square root of pi over four, which is square root of pi over eight. This is the answer to this problem, square root of pi over eight. Now, how is this zero? Just quickly, let me show you here. So this is gonna be equal to the limit. I'm going to pull the one half, negative one half back. I'm gonna write negative one half, negative one over two times the limit as, and I'm gonna plug in R into this, it's gonna be R e to the negative r squared. So I'm trying to get this limit as r goes to infinity. Okay, we can actually rewrite this as being equal to negative one over two times the limit as r goes to infinity of, this can be written as r over e to the r squared. Okay, now if you pay attention, as r goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, and this also goes to infinity, so we have the indeterminate form infinity over infinity. And because of that, we can use L'Hopital's rule. Applying L'Hopital's rule tells you that the derivative of this is one, and the derivative of this should be two r e to the r squared. So by L'Hopital's rule, we're gonna have negative one over two times the limit as r goes to infinity of, this is gonna be one over two r e to r, e to the r squared. Ooh, well, as this goes to infinity, this is gonna be equal to zero, and that's the justification for the zero. So at this point, everything looks clean. You've learned so many tricks and what to tackle. Remember, to not stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.